As I started building it and growing the community and seeing how much people loved the bags, I realized that this could really be something big, like it was giving billion dollar business idea. My name is Will Glory Tanjong. I am the founder and CEO of Anima Iris, and I am 25 years old. Will Glory is a full-time MBA student at UPenn's Wharton School of Business, and she also runs Anima Iris, a luxury handbag brand. Since launching in February 2020, the company has brought in over $725,000 in sales. And that's not all. Anima Iris has caught the attention of celebrities like Beyonce, big retailers like Revolve and Nordstrom, and was even seen on Issa Rae's show, Insecure. These bags are spotted everywhere, and this is just the beginning. Here's how a full-time MBA student built a profitable handbag business out of her knack for fashion and desire to share Black stories. This is on the side. I've always been a very fashionable person. People always ask me, where'd you get this, where'd you get that? And I'm like, hey, maybe people would just buy it for me. Will Glory doesn't have a formal background in fashion, but saw an opportunity when she realized friends were always asking about her outfits. This got her thinking that she could make a business out of her love for style and desire to provide economic opportunities for Africa. Since launching Anima Iris, Will Glory has built out her brand's production facility in Senegal in West Africa, where the bags are hand-sewn. The company now manufactures over 500 bags a month. Will Glory was born in Cameroon and grew up in Maryland with her two sisters. Her parents owned a laundromat and juggled various other jobs. Her family was financially stable until her parents separated and tumbled into economic hardships when she was 14 years old. I'll never forget the day when my mom told us that we were like finally approved for food stamps and my older sister and I, I remember we were like so ecstatic but then we like stopped and we looked at each other and we were like oh my god like how did we get here? Will Glory promised herself that she would become financially independent. Her first steps were studying hard in school and getting a job. My first paid working job ever was actually working in a skating rink. I worked minimum wage and I remember working so hard and you know after two weeks looking at my paycheck and I'm like this is it? I promised myself I was like well Glory you are never going to earn minimum wage again in your life. Her hard work paid off at work and at school. She earned a full ride to Princeton University. My parents didn't go to college, so I am a first-generation college graduate. Unfortunately, during Will Glory's senior year, her mom passed away from breast cancer. My mom was a huge part of my childhood, and my mom was my biggest motivator. After we buried her, I just went back to school, put my head down, had my senior thesis, and I put a lot of effort into it and just kind of like ignored everything that I was feeling and actually dealing with. Will Glory ended up inheriting about $50,000 from her mother. I was really surprised to see that she had quite a formidable savings and that our home actually had a lot of equity in it. By the time she graduated in June 2018, she also saved about $22,000 from her on-campus job and a few summer internships. And right after graduation, Will Glory started a full-time job in Atlanta, making around $86,000 a year as an operational manager at a manufacturing and supply company. I really thought that making all this money coming out of college and having a job that wasn't really demanding was actually going to make me really happy, but I was actually the unhappiest I had ever been. So I had never really taken a moment to actually slow down, to really, you know, deal with the passing of the most important person in my life. In June 2019, Will Glory took a leave of absence from her job to focus on her mental health. During her break, she returned to Africa, not knowing that it would also become the birthplace of her company. Her first stop was in Ghana, where she connected with small business owners and creatives. Later on, she traveled to Kenya and then Senegal's capital, Dakar. There is like a community in Senegal, essentially, where these artisans gather and they're creating all kinds of things. So that's where I went. During her trip, she was inspired to start the African Hustle series, a platform that featured interviews with entrepreneurs she met and showcased their work on YouTube and Instagram. So we're here at Mama Rocks with Paul, who is the evening head chef, who is going to actually guide us through the kitchen and showcase to us the operation behind the scenes. Meeting all of these people inspired Will Glory. And so she drew up a purse and took it to an artisan to be made. She also designed jewelry, but soon decided to focus on handbags. 
I remember emailing my financial advisor and saying, hey, so <laughs> I'm going to start making bags for fun and I need like $5,000. And she transferred over the money and I know she was thinking, this girl does not know where this is going. <laughs> um, but that's how it started and that's where I got the money from, from my savings. That money went to creating 50 purses, paying for Will Glory's travel expenses and covering materials and labor to make the bags. I brought them back to America, set up a website, and just started selling them. I thought that this could be a great side hustle to recoup a lot of the money that I had, you know, spent in the last couple of months while I was traveling. In March 2020, the same week COVID was declared a pandemic, she quit her job and moved to Philadelphia. She was determined to build her company. Just three months later, Will Glory experienced a defining point in her business journey. I had been building our website. It was like 1 a.m. in the morning and one of the Vogue editors tagged me and I was like, no way, you are lying. Like, I am not on Vogue. Then there was a Twitter moment. It received like almost 30,000 retweets. It was crazy. The website sold out. And then of course, the biggest best moment today was my queen, Beyonce, um, wearing her bag, posting the bag on Instagram. That was definitely, it's like still one of the greatest moments, if not the greatest moment of my life. That day alone, Anima Iris raked in over $23,000 in sales. It was absolutely nuts, but that taught me it's time to expand. Then we have the regular Zuri, which just has a leather top handle. The price point for this bag is between five to six hundred dollars. This year, we forecasted earlier in the year that we would end the year making three hundred fifty thousand, and we've already surpassed that. We've already done half a million dollars. Anima Iris generated over six hundred thousand dollars in sales in twenty twenty one alone. Its biggest month to date was November of that year. The company brought in about $168,000. Black Friday was also the brand's biggest day yet, bringing in over $62,000 in revenue. As sales skyrocket, so has production. But none of it would be possible without the help of Will Glory's growing team and the artisans who help make her bags. My artisans make twice what the average artisan in Dakar makes. I now have seven artisans that work for me and it's a really comfortable place. So it's air conditioned, of course. But running Anima Iris isn't the only thing Will Glory has to manage. Right now I'm taking four classes and then one independent study. I wanted to get an MBA because I wanted to build the company while also learning how to build a company. But what ended up happening is that I didn't foresee Anima Iris growing so quickly. Will Glory says people always ask why she's continuing grad school since she already has a successful business. I honestly haven't dropped out because like I said, I graduated from Princeton with no debt. Now I have all this debt. I am like at least $100,000 in debt. Technically I should drop out, but the African immigrant child in me really can't. Currently she's on track to graduate with her MBA in spring 2022. So I am crawling for dear life to the finish line. In the coming months, Anima Iris will be branching out beyond the e-commerce space and will also be sold at Saks Fifth Avenue. My larger goal is to turn this into a full lifestyle brand, right? So I want to be selling clothes, but most importantly, I want us to really remain made in Africa. I didn't come from the most privileged background, but I've definitely leveraged my resources. If I do anything in this life, I'm always gonna bet on me. I'm really living life to the fullest extent, and it's so possible for you to have that same life experience, but you have to be willing to like reach out and like go find that life for yourself.